another example of a really good tool that's digital that you can use to practice retrieval practice with your classes is called ClassKick. Now, I think this is something that's probably going to be a little bit more new to people than quizzes or Quizlet. Um, and ClassKick basically allows you to see all of your students working and give them high quality feedback from anywhere, not just in the classroom. So this is something I wish I'd known about during lockdown when we were teaching from home um, because it's a really, really good way to be able to see all pupils work at one time. Now, don't get me wrong, there are other ways of seeing students working, uh, like things like Apple Classroom. Um, but with Apple Classroom, it can sometimes be clunky, but also in Apple Classroom, they have to be in proximity to you. So they have to be in front of you. Whereas with ClassKick, they can be anywhere. They could be working on this from home. They could be working on this um, from different parts of the school. Um, so it's very, very useful um, in terms of that. Now, basically, there are a web version and an app version of ClassKick. Now, I'm using the app version at the moment on my iPad, um, but the web version, if you're going to use that, is best used on Google Chrome rather than Safari. Now, I'm going to show you how you can prep an assignment. So if I come onto my ClassKick app, this is what it looks like at first. Um, I'm just going to ignore rosters. I've ignored that so far anyway, um, when I've been using this with my classes. Um, and you can see here some of the assignments I have already created, which we'll come back to in a little second. Now, when you want to create or prep an assignment, you can upload your own content. Um, so if you go to the plus button at the top right hand side, you can either create a new blank assignment, you can create it from a file, so that could be your own PDF worksheets that you already have, um, or you can browse their assignment library. So we're going to try that first. So if I go to assignment library and let's pretend I'm teaching a chemistry class. I can select that from here. I can choose the grade if I want to. Um, and then I can see the different ones that are available that other people have made. Um, I can click into those and I can have a look at them and see what I think. So these ones are a lot of kind of highlighting the kind of elements on the periodic table here. Um, if I'd like to keep it, I can save it. Um, I can also edit it as well um, and add more questions or change it to the way I like too. So that's how you browse other ones that other people have made. If you want to upload your own, you can create from file by tapping that upload button. Um, and as I said, if you have made PDF worksheets before, it's really, really good at recognising those questions and you can put them in and then make them digital, which is really, really handy. If you're wanting to create a new blank assignment, you just tap that and I'm just going to call this delete so I remember to delete it later and then tap done. And then it'll open up automatically three slides for you. Now you can tap these and press and hold them to rearrange. Um, you can add more slides as well, but at the moment we've just got three. Um, now what I wanna do is I maybe wanna tap into one of these. So if I tap into one, along the top is your toolbar and your toolbar can let you do lots of different things or add lots of different things to these slides. So these are the slides that you will give to the pupils to then fill out. Now along the top, there's things like different um, pens, there's highlighters, which you can change the colour of and the thickness of. And um, there's also rubbers. You can add text boxes and the text boxes, you can change the size and you can change the colour as well. You can also add lines, which is really, really handy if you're drawing graphs, which I'll show you in a little bit. You can tap the microphone button, which will allow you to add audio. So if you want to explain the task to your pupils, you can add audio of yourself explaining it in as well, which is quite a nice feature. You can also add a link as well or a label. Um, so I can put links in there that the pupils can click on. So say, for example, um, I've asked them to label a cell, for example. But I've said, right, you can label a cell. But if you're unsure, you don't remember what we did last time, then you can click on the link to the YouTube video here. There's also an option to take a picture. So you can take a picture live from within the app. You can choose from your photos or you can create from a file. This is one of my favourite features. So you can add images that students can move and rotate. Um, so basically the student can use them as a um, manipulative. You can do that in the kind of, um, see that in the picture here, uh, going through it. Um, so this is a really, really nice feature that's not always free on other things like quizzes, etc., where you can get people to actually move things around. Another option you can do is you can add in some multiple choice questions and you can get them to mark themselves as well. You can add in fill in the blank. So I could add in a passage here and I could add in fill in the blank boxes and you can add in acceptable answers that you would take for that. So again, it's self-marking. 
And the other nice feature is you can draw maths equations as well, because sometimes they can be a bit fiddly to input using a keyboard. So there are lots and lots and lots of different things that you can do on just one slide. And it doesn't have to be just one question per slide. Um, you can do multiple questions per slide. And at the top here, I can then decide the point value of this slide as well. Um, so it's really, really nice. And then you can just fire through those slides and add in your own features. Now that's if you want to create your own one from scratch. Um, and then once you've done that, you can assign it to the class either using a class code um, or you can um, yeah, get people to kind of join from there. I can also share the assignment using the share button on the top right hand side as well. Now, if I come out and I'll go in and actually show you one of these in practice. So basically, if I show you the student demo assignment and we go into here, what happens when pupils work on their own devices? You can see the example students down the bottom here. So I'm able to see all of the students at once and they can input things like drawings, text, images or audio. They can answer fill in the blank or multiple choice questions and you can see in real time what they are doing and provide feedback to them. You can provide grading and you can also provide stickers. <coughs> Pupils can also raise their hand for help within the website or app to help with confidence. Um, so you know the ones who will never put their hands up for help in front of their peers. And also students can ask their peers for help anonymously as well. So it's really easy to see how pupils are progressing. So for example, if I go into here and I act like I am a student at the moment, um, I can raise my hand using that wee button on the right hand side. Um, so the pupils raise their hand and you'll see it in the wee help centre. And it means you know exactly which slide that you need to go to to help that pupil which is quite a nice feature there. Now there is an issue in terms of there is a paid version of this app so on the free version you're limited to 20 assignments however from what I've seen the number of slides is unlimited in each assignment so if I was going to use these with my classes I'd probably just make one assignment for each level to be used all year so for example I'd make one from an at five one from a higher one from s1 and the great thing about it is the assignments don't need to be completed when students join for the first time you can add a new slide at any time and it'll automatically be added to the students too so you could potentially build this up week by week or lesson by lesson over a year and then reuse the same assignment with the same level again next year so that's something that I think would be really handy because for things like quizzes you cannot change it once you've assigned it to the class you'll have to reassign it if you're going to make any edits to that quiz whereas with this you can make edits whenever you want and it'll automatically appear on the pupils one so I don't think the free version really hinders anything unlike quizzes and Kahoot there's no actual loss of questions question types or features like drawing um, in the free version. So you can basically do all of those things still. So I'm going to show you how this works. So this is an example student demo. So I'm going to pretend I'm a student in this. So I can use the drawing tool here to write my name. So people can either do that with their finger um, or they can use a stylus using the raise hand button. So when pupils are on this, they can use the raise hand button um, to ask for help with their slides. Um, I can't do that at the moment, unfortunately, um, on here, but hopefully um, the pupils would be able to. Then on the next one, I can use a selector tool. So selector tool is the one up here. What I can do is I can select these paper clips and I can move them and drag them to basically work out the height of something. I can use audio tool to record things if I'm a pupil. So I can tap that audio tool and put in um, just me speaking through my answer instead, which is quite nice. I can again use that selector tool to type in the fill in the blanks box. So I can tap on that box um, and then I can type in my answer for what's the missing stage. Again, I can use that pen tool to solve this equation. I can again use the selector tool to pick one of the multiple choice options. So I can choose A, B, C, D or E. I can use that link tool if I'm a pupil as well, which is quite nice. It's not just for teachers. Um, so you can place an article about your favourite place, for example. So they can go away and research and find a link and then put that link into it as their answer. You can use the image tool to upload a picture. So again, pupils have access to all those same tools really that you do. So they can upload a picture of their favourite hobby, for example. And they can use the text tool and the highlighting tools as well. Um, this is what I was meaning about the graph. So I've given this graph and I've already filled it in, but I could make them do a graph, a line graph, using that line tool that was available too. Again, I'll come out and show you another little example. So pupils could put these in order. So they could move these and put them in order from the shortest to the tallest. 
so you can actually put them over the top of each other which is quite nice so this is quite a nice one for especially kind of primary school age children so i can put those in order and um, again i can put them in order from shortest to longest and um, this is the example of videos so i can embed videos and say please watch this video and then here is me explaining how to do each one. So using the red pencil to mark each inch on the ruler below and um, giving what's the abbreviation for the word inch. But I can scaffold this by basically describing and recording an audio of my voice with each of my questions. Again, I've described it and I can use the ruler, which is movable, to measure objects. So there's quite a lot of uses that you could have there with this. Again, this is all about measurements, so it's a lot of using rulers. Again, this one's quite nice, so you can add in scavenger hunts. So find three objects in the room to measure with a ruler. In the spaces below, write your name of your object and measurement in inches, then add a picture of it, and then use the pen to show and record the measurement. So there's so many different things that those pupils could do to demonstrate their learning on just one slide here, which I think is really, really nice. And it's got a lot of those tools built in, which a lot of other apps don't have. And then you've got the benefit of you being able to see this in real time time as well. As I said, if the pupils have joined this at the bottom, you'll see all of their names and all of their work as they're doing it as well. So as I said, there's some really, really good bits here. In terms of retrieval practice, it allows the pupils to answer multiple different types of question, but also allows you to give them feedback easily, which is one of those key features of good retrieval practice that I spoke about before. It also allows you to do things we spoke about, like rearranging or ranking or drawing diagrams, um, which is something that is missing from some of the other apps that I recommend for retrieval practice, such as quizzes and carousel. So this helps um, all of us make it low stakes and non-threatening. You could have different difficulties of question to make sure it has enough success and challenge. And you can test whole class understanding and normalise retrieval practice as part of the class routine by using class kick. But remember to make sure that it is closed book when you're letting pupils do this. I hope that that's been a handy introduction to class kick. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. Thank you.